In this tutorial, I'm going to talk about the concept of hoisting in JavaScript. Hoisting is a concept in the JavaScript programming language, and uh, people tend to get confused too much about what it is and what it does. But with the knowledge that we have about the compilation and in the interpretation step, the concept of hoisting should become self-evident. Now that you've seen those tutorials, once I explain the concept of hoisting to you, you'll be like, oh yeah, I already knew that. So hopefully it's not going to be too much of a new thing considering what we've just covered. The idea of hoisting is that whenever you write variable declarations in JavaScript, it's almost as if when the interpreter runs, the variable declarations are hoisted to the top, it's moved to the top. And uh, it kind of feels that way because of the two-step process that the compiler and the interpreter goes through. First, the compiler looks at just the wars, and then the interpreter executes whatever the wars are doing. So it almost feels like all the war declarations are kind of Hoist it to the very top, and then whatever code you write uh, with those variables execute. So no matter how you've written the code for the wars, it's almost as if it always goes to the top. So let me ex explain what I mean by that. So let's say I have um, a variable a assigned a value 10. So it's an undeclared variable at this point. Uh, let's say I have a console.log of uh, b, and then I have c++. So I'm basically using three variables here. Or uh, The first line uses the variable a, and uh, it's a write operation on a. The second line uses a variable b and it's a read operation on b. Uh, the third line uses the variable c and it's both a write and a read operation because c++ basically takes the value of c, adds one to it, and then assigns it back to c. So I have read and write operations in these three variables, but I haven't declared them yet. Okay, so at this point of time, they're undeclared variables. Let's say I declare them after I do all this stuff, right? So let's say I have a var a, var b, and a var c over here. So the point of hoisting is that it really doesn't matter that you have the var abc declared at the very bottom. Since the whole execution is a two-step process and the compiler is the first step, the compilation is the first step, it gets to this wars first anyway. It's going to skip through this part and it's going to get to the wars anyway. So it's almost as if you had the wars at the very top for the compiler to run and then after the wars are processed, only then would the interpreter step run and process these things. So the idea is it doesn't matter where you declare the wars. It's always almost as if it's hoisted to the top. That's the whole concept of hoisting. We've looked at examples before where you add a war after you've used it and it still works because the compiler gets to the wars first anyway. So this has, uh, this works for both functions as well as variables. Let me give you an example of a function. Let's say I have a function my f in one and I have some logic over here but now let's say I call my f in one before the function is declared this still works fine because this is something that the compiler interprets right the compiler says okay I've got this function so it's going to take that and create it on the scope we've seen it at the moment it sees this function declaration there is a my f in one created on the global scope and so this function can execute even though the function declaration is below. This is especially important when you're dealing with recursive functions with two or more functions. So what what, what does recursion look like? In, in case you're not familiar, a recursive function is when a function calls itself. So let's say I have a function recurse and then um, somewhere inside I call recurse. All right, so this is a recursive function. This, of course, has to be inside some condition so that this doesn't keep calling itself for eternity, but there is some kind of a condition which makes it break. But with the condition, you can actually have a valid business logic in a recursive function. Uh, this is okay, but now you can have recursion with multiple functions. So the way you can have recursion with multiple functions is let's say you have function A and a function B. If function A calls B and B calls A, you essentially have a recursive function with two functions. So let's say I have a function F and A, and then inside this somewhere I call F and B. Okay, and then I have a function F and B which calls F and A. Now this could be a valid reason to implement functions this way. And now you see there has been an interlink between two functions, A calls B and B calls A. Now which one would you need to declare first? If you cannot declare A before B because uh, B calls A and you cannot declare B before A because A calls B, right? So this is an important reason why you would need some kind of variable hoisting. So when you 
write code like this, it really doesn't matter which order in which you do it because the declaration always happens first because of the compilation step that runs first. So it really doesn't matter which order you run it. If the order mattered, the second function could call the first function, but the first function could never have called the second function because that gets declared after it, right? No matter how you switch it, whatever is the first function could not have called within itself the second function because the declaration follows. So this is uh, where function hoisting helps. It doesn't matter which order you run it. It's almost as if function A and function B are the declaration is hoisted to the very top and then the execution always happens afterwards. So this is an important thing to remember. And also important to remember is that this happens for function declarations only. It doesn't happen for function expressions. Let me give you an example why. Let's say I have a function here. I'm calling function A. And uh, let's say I'm creating a function A here, not as a function declaration, but as a function expression. Say var fna equals have an anonymous function over here. Now, what is going to happen? Well, the compilation step runs first. Uh, what does it do? It ignores this line because there is no new variable being created. It comes to line five, it says, it just looks at this part, right? Var fna, and it creates a variable called fna in the global scope. It doesn't know what type it is. It doesn't do the assignment because the assignment is the job of the interpreter. So it just creates an empty variable in the global scope, which has a value of undefined, obviously. And now it says, okay, and the compiler says, okay, I'm done. Now interpreter, you go ahead with your thing. Now the interpreter tries to execute FNA and it is undefined. So this is not gonna work. So this works if it's a function declaration, right? If I were to change this to a function declaration, then this would work, but it doesn't work if it's a function expression because an expression gets interpreted by the interpreter. It's not the compiler which actually assigns the value. So hopefully this made sense. Uh, play around with it and you know when you're looking at code it's kind of obvious where function and variable hoisting happens but this is an important concept to remember. Uh, there is always declaration hoisting in JavaScript be it variables or functions.